sense because testosterone levels are now significantly higher than before the use of finasteride or butasterides, you're more likely to convert this testosterone into estradiol. So gyno is an issue. Now, acne might be an issue. Water retention might be an issue. Um, moving over to cholesterol side chain cleaving enzyme, also known as P450SCC or CYP11A1. Right? This is a mitochondrial enzyme that catalyzes the conversion of cholesterol into pregnenolone. This is the first reaction that is needed for normal steroidogenesis. So besides inhibiting cholesterol and all of the issues that come along with that with the previous compounds which we discussed, this is the first enzyme that actually helps with the neurosteroid and sex hormone cascades. And the highest level of the cholesterol side chain cleavage enzyme system is found in the adrenal cortex and the corpus luteum, and it's also highly expressed in the ovaries and the testes. Keep in mind that the synthesis of pregnenolone from cholesterol happens in several different steps. They're on the screen with um, impronounceable names. The inhibitors are amino glutathiamide, also known as cytadrine, which is commonly used by bodybuilders back in the day as an uh, aromatized inhibitor. Nowadays, it's not really used, but I would still like to mention it here. The kenrenone, which is a spirolactone aldactone metabolite, also a potent inhibitor of the uh, cholesterol side chain cleavage enzymes. Ketoconazole, again, right? Keep it in mind, make a mental note. And of course, spironolactone is also a potent inhibitor. So these, if you're using them, keep in mind that you're now inhibiting the synthesis of alone coming from cholesterol. So ketoconazole is already mentioned twice. And again, it will come back a couple more times in this video. And if you start inhibiting the synthesis of alone from cholesterol, you're already um, causing issues with the full sex hormone and neurosteroid cascade. And if you're on performance enhancing drugs, you use anabolic androgenic steroids, cookie cutter HRT with testosterone, pregnant alone, and DHEA. This is not really an issue, but still, if you're currently drug-free and you're ke taking ketoconazole, you're inhibiting now multiple steps, right? Of course, you're not going to use cytadrine if you're drug-free as an aromatized inhibitor because there's much better alternatives, and I believe that cytadrine isn't even available. So keep in mind that if you're using aldactone as an anti-androgen acne medication, which is generally recommended and prescribed for women suffering from hormonal acne, they run aldactone for months in duration, and thus, perinanol levels, DHA levels, DHA sulfate also, testosterone, estrogen, that might all come down. So one of its effects is by reducing sex hormone production and a neurosteroid production, thus uh, improving acne, and that's besides the blockade of the androgen receptor and now testosterone and dihydrotestosterone, which women also produce, albeit in trace amounts compared to men, um, blocking the androgen receptor further um, improves hormonal acne. But you might not feel so good when all of your sex hormones are, you know, getting into that subclinical level. So keep that in mind for, for all the females out there. There are much better methods out there to control your acne. I have several different videos on this YouTube channel, you don't need to inhibit the sex hormone cascade. Don't worry, spironolactone, aldactone will make a comeback later on. Moving over to the three beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase enzymes, which catalyzes the biosynthesis of sex hormones predominantly in the adrenal glands, but they're also present in other steroid producing tissues, including the ovaries, the testes, and even the placenta. In humans, there are two, two variants of the 3 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase enzymes. It's the one and two variants. This enzyme is responsible for a couple different steps in the sex hormone cascade, including pregnenolone into progesterone, DHEA into androstenedione, 5 alpha androstenediol into testosterone, and androstenediol into androstenedione. So when you start inhibiting these enzymes, masculinity levels 50%, right? You go from the alpha or sigma down to the beta levels or the gamma levels, or actually gamma levels, are quite okay if you're talking about masculinity. I mean, I think the Hulk is pretty damn masculine, albeit slightly enraged 24-7. Okay, the inhibitors of this enzyme are ciproterone acetate, also known as androcur, which is a medication also prescribed for hormonal acne. Genistein, which is a naturally occurring isoflavin, um, actually described as an angiogenesis inhibitor and a phytoestrogen, and is found in several different naturally occurring um, food sources, including tofu, flava beans, soybeans, and even coffee, albeit that I couldn't really found any evidence that coffee can inhibit some of these enzymes and thus re reduce the conversion of pregnenolone into progesterone or DHEA into androstenedione 
or um, androstenediol into testosterone, right? So again, some of the evidence is there that coffee contains genistein, but there's no evidence that coffee can actually reduce testosterone levels. Next one is gestrinone, which is the foundation of tetrahydrogestrinone, also known as THG or the clear, which was used to beat the drug test back in the day. Of course, this is a progestin-based anabolic steroid. Um, so HPJ would be shut down anyway. Still, it would inhibit some of the earlier steps in the sex hormone cascade. And it's the same for metribolone, also known as methyltrienolone, basically the 17-alpha alkylated methylated version of trenbolone, so oral trin metribolone, and oxymetalone anadrol, potent 3 beta hydroxy steroidehydrogenase enzyme inhibitors. So if you take metribolone, anadrol, or even coffee, potentially, but I'm more likely soybeans, right? So don't be a soy boy. If you take these, you actually inhibit some of the steps in the sex hormone cascade, resulting in all kinds of issues like loss of libido, loss of focus, dry skin, loss of motivation, weak tendons, joints, and ligaments, osteoporosis, cardiovascular issues. I mean, the list goes on because you're inhibiting multiple steps. So if you don't want that to happen, at least be an HCG to um, you know, keep the hormone cascade going to a certain extent. So you're overcompensating for the metribolone or exometalone or the you know, tetrahydrogesterone that you might be taking, even though it's not really available. Um, you have to be on cookie cutter HRT if you're going with oxymetalone to increase the pumps. Next one on the list are the 17 alpha hydroxylase enzymes, which are also found in the adrenal cortex, the ovaries, and the testes. This is a key enzyme in the serogenic pathway that produces progestins, mineral corticoids, glucocorticoids, androgens, and estrogens, at least the earliest steps. You can see on the screen that it converts pregnenolone with several intermediates into dihydroepiandrosterone, as well as 17 alpha hydroxyprogesterone, which converts into androstenedione, which downstream converts into testosterone, right? So you might be inhibiting testosterone synthesis downstream. The inhibitors are can renanone, again, the spironolactone, aldactone metabolite, gestrinone, right, the foundation of uh, the clear tide hydrogestrinone, ketoconazole, nizerol shampoo, spironolactone, aldactone, again, and stenazole, winstrol, also a potent inhibitor of the 17 hydroxylase enzymes. So if you take winstrol, right, again, you have to make sure that some of the neurosteroid supplementation and testosterone supplementation is in place. Because HPTA downregulation and direct inhibition of uh, sex hormone synthesis is going to take place. So an oxymetalone only cycle or a winstrol stenazole only cycle, bad idea. Don't do it, please. Kids, don't do it, right? Don't do these oral only cycles. It's stupid from a multitude of different angles. Next, 70 beta hydroxy steroidehydrogenase enzymes, which helps with steroidogenesis and steroid metabolism dihydrate epiandrosterone into 5-androstenediol and vice versa, androstenediol into testosterone and vice versa, and esterone into estradiol and vice versa. Guess what the inhibitor is? Ethanol, alcohol. So if you drink a lot of alcohol, you can expect, you can bet all of your testicles and your adrenal cortex on this fact that your sex hormone and neurosteroid balance will be off. Don't do it frequently. Don't do it daily. Don't be an asshole, right? Nobody is productive drinking alcohol every single day. If you want to celebrate every two months or every three months, like I mentioned in the previous video about how I manage my vices, set a goal, then you can drink some alcohol. Don't do it every day. Don't do it too frequently because your sex hormone and neurostyle balance will be off tremendously. And symphostatin, Zocor, another statin, which we mentioned earlier, also terrible for these enzymes. All right, now we get into the juicy stuff. The five alpha reductase enzymes, there's three different isoforms. These help with the metabolism of testosterone into dihydrotestosterone and also bile acid synthesis. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with the use of finasteride and dutasteride. Even though dihydrotestosterone levels will go down, allopregnenolone levels will also go down, resulting in all kinds of cognitive issues. And because testosterone levels are now significantly higher than before the use of finasteride or dutasteride, you're more likely to convert this testosterone into estradiol. So gyno is an issue. Uh, acne might be an issue. Water retention might be an issue. And, uh, you know, mood regulation might be harder to manage if your estradiol levels are really, really that high because the overexpression of aromatized enzymes, right? All kinds of issues can uh, occur with 5-alpha reductase enzyme inhibition. 
Personally, I don't think it's a good idea because, you know, the libido issues, you need some DHT for erectile quality and erectile strength and uh, overall erectile length and girth, right? Like we mentioned in the DHT cream video, I don't think it's a good idea if you're solely using these 5 5 reductase enzymes to uh, prevent hair loss. There's much better ways to prevent hair loss and otherwise... Well, going bald isn't the end of the world, but not having a fully functional um, member in between your legs, I think that's worse than uh, losing a little bit of hair here and there. But again, that's up to your preference. Um, some people have a different perspective. So most notably, the 5 5 reductase enzymes helps in the production of allopregnanolone and isopregnanolone, as well as the conversion of androstenedione into 5-alpha, androstenedione, testosterone into 5-alpha dihydrotestosterone, DHT, Nandrolone into 5 alpha dihydronandrolone, DHN, and boldenone into 5 alpha dihydroboldenone, also known as DHB, which is actually found on the black market as dihydroboldenone acetate recipients. Uh, might be slightly painful injections, but some people swear by it, albeit that boldenone and dihydroboldenone might have some kidney toxic effects. But they're also very active as aromatized enzyme inhibitors, which we'll discuss a little bit later, and androstenedione into androstenone. So, inhibition of all of that can occur from the test, right? Like we mentioned before, epitestosterone can also inhibit the 5-alpha reductase enzyme. So if you start injecting that for a couple of days leading into a drug test to keep your testosterone to epitestosterone ratio within a 4 to 1 ratio and hopefully beating the drug test. But hold your horses, don't get too excited. That's assuming there's no carbon isotope ratio mass spectrometry testing taking place, which can determine if your testosterone or epitestosterone is coming from endogenous production from your testicles, basically, or exogenous sources through um, the subcutaneous or intramuscular administrations, right? Don't get too excited. Still, Epitestosterone, if you go that route and attempt to beat the drug test, keep in mind that it can reduce 5-alpha reductase enzyme uh, conversion of testosterone in the diet of testosterone and some of the other pathways. So you might feel slightly off if you decide to go that extreme. Fatty acids can also inhibit 5-alpha reductase enzymes to a certain extent. You don't have to start minimizing your fatty acid intake because otherwise um, you might inhibit the sex hormone cascade entirely you need healthy fatty acids for normal hormone production still it's something of note that linoleic acid linoleic acid monolinolein and oleic acid can inhibit the alpha reductase enzymes apparently finasteride i mean who would have thought that that can inhibit the five alpha reductase enzymes sulfometal extract and even vitamin b6 and zinc can inhibit these enzymes to a certain extent so take this to heart if you suffer from libido issues or gyno or all kinds of issues related to low DHT levels and high estradiol levels, right? L uh, low motivation, inability to focus, dry skin, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This can all be caused by some of the compounds that you're taking that can inhibit the 5-alpha reductase enzymes. And since they contribute to bile acid synthesis, another reason to look into it, into what you're taking, because you might get constipation, reduced excretion of metabolic waste products, um, you know, impaired nutrient absorption, etc., etc. Keep this in mind.